So here at Unit 3 Compliance, we specialize in EMC. What is EMC? It stands for electromagnetic compatibility. So how does our equipment sit in the electromagnetic spectrum? How does it interact with other devices in that spectrum? EMC is, has two main tenets, one of emissions and one of immunity. With emissions, we're concerned about what does our product give out? Does it emit radio waves that are going to be picked up by another radio receiver? Does it conduct energy out on cable interfaces such as Ethernet or AC mains power? For the immunity side, we're more concerned about what interference the unit can accept. So interference from something else that's emitting. It could be interference from a nearby mobile phone, maybe a lightning surge on power lines, the electrical noise caused by somebody turning a switch on and off. All of these are very common electrical phenomena that our unit is going to have to deal with at some point in its life. So emissions is probably the most important test to do. If you're only going to do one EMC test, emissions is the one to look at. Emissions testing is frequently the hardest to get right because good performance in emissions testing is dependent on so many other parameters. It's highly dependent on the design of the product. It's dependent on the cables that you connect to it. It's a very, very tricky test to get right. Immunity is often seen as a product quality issue. Let's take the example of putting your mobile phone near a radio. What happens? You'll hear the da -da 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 noise, which is the radio demodulating the RF carrier from the mobile phone. Obviously, it shouldn't do that. It should only demodulate the radio signal that it's intended to demodulate. We have a problem of immunity. The radio is not sufficiently immune to the phone signal. How can we fix this? We can move the mobile phone further away from the radio. There are many situations where we can't move the source of interference further away from the victim. So this is why immunity testing is important. So what are the key emissions tests that we need to consider? The main one is radiated emissions. To test radiated emissions, we use an anechoic chamber or an open area test site. These feature an antenna, a receiving antenna at one end connected to a very sensitive radio receiver and at the other end, some method of moving the unit under test around so that we can evaluate the radio emissions from a 360 degree pattern. This is important because we need to be able to characterize the levels being emitted over a wide frequency range. For a typical electronics product, this would be 30 megahertz to one gigahertz. There are many standards, the radio equipment standards in particular, where you're often called to go higher. 6 GHz is a common figure used for European testing. Depending on the frequency of the oscillator contained within your device, you may end up having to go higher. For instance, the FCC mandates testing as high as 40 GHz or even higher. The levels that we measure have to be under a prescribed limit. Some of the other tests we will perform are conducted emissions. This is looking at the current that is conducted out of the unit onto cables that can interfere with other things. This could be a DC power port, if that connects to a DC distribution network. It could be the AC mains input, because that connects to a very large AC mains distribution network of which other electronic products are connected. We might also think about network cables or telecommunications cables, phone lines, ethernet cables, these are all part of this particular test. So some of the immunity tests that we'll typically carry out, electrostatic discharge, that has the potential to crash or corrupt memory, to reset products, to cause defects in the performance. We'll carry out radiated RF immunity testing, where we put the unit inside a chamber and we broadcast large levels of noise at it to see what the effect is. This is analogous to having a mobile phone placed close or a walkie-talkie placed close to the unit under test. The unit can demodulate that noise and it can cause performance issues. 
we also perform electrical fast transient testing. What happens when a contact or a relay, a switch closes, you get an arc across the contacts. And that arc is typically characterized with a very, very fast rise time conducted down a cable. So that's a very important test to do. Lightning surge, not talking about a direct strike of lightning. You would, I think EMC would probably be the last thing that you'd be concerned about if your product had been hit by lightning. But lightning nearby can induce surges onto the low voltage mains network. And that, in turn, can cause problems with your unit. Things will blow up, things may catch fire, so you really don't want that to happen. We'll also look at conducted RF immunity. What happens when noise from another source is being conducted in on a cable, on the mains cable, maybe on a long cable like Ethernet or USB?